Well, hello again. I have a totally different perspective. I'll give you my personal observations as an investor as to what countries do to attract talent, because it's all about talent. It's all about entrepreneurs. I've been privileged to visiting pretty much all the Central Europe, Eastern Europe, London, obviously, West Europe, uh, Asia. I don't know if Russia is Europe. I don't know. <laughs> Russia is everything. But we started a fund in 2006, a Silicon Valley style fund, or so I thought. But if a country spent 70 years uh, punishing entrepreneurship, then uh, you can imagine when a Silicon Valley fund shows up and says, OK, now we'll be all capitalist, and not just capitalists, we'll build small companies which eventually will make more money than your investment in oil. So that's what my practical experience is. But we also looked at, um, yeah, I had a couple of slides, but we don't need slides. It's OK. Uh, because, you, no, it's OK. We, we should, don't worry. We don't need slides. OK. So I would say the basic difference between Europe and the US when it comes to entrepreneurship will be about the attitude of entrepreneurs and the support system. While you all read all the books and articles about what makes Silicon Valley Silicon Valley, we won't go into that. You all know it. But there are distinct elements. Yes, there is an entrepreneur, investor, the support group, accountants, lawyers, education. Now, why can't we replicate Silicon Valley all over the world? Well, we cannot. But if you are an entrepreneur and you're deciding where to go, and um, I won't talk about India or Asia because I understand it's a different subject matter. But if you're a small country, a Baltic states like Estonia, and you can claim that some of your founders ended up creating Skype, that's the best model any entrepreneur would want to follow. So you need success stories. Now, why London is attractive? From my perspective, because it has a very established system of investment experience of big funds and small funds. You have an early stage fund like Amadeus. You have big funds like Index and Axel. And uh, they are not any different from top funds we have in Silicon Valley. Now, if you go outside London to Eastern European capitals, their entrepreneurs are as talented, as driven, as ambitious, no investors. And that's a problem. When I say no investors, I mean no, um, they do have venture funds, but they tend to be very small. And they invest in early stage seed rounds. But when it comes to growth, then that money is not available. And it's true for Russia. It's true for Bulgaria. It's true for Germany. So that would be, from my perspective, the um, biggest barrier for creating big companies. Having said that, Europe already has 41 unicorns, and it will grow. But those unicorns, as you know, end up in Silicon Valley. Why? Because they have access to a bigger market. So if you are an entrepreneur and you want to test your product, Europe would be a good place to nurture your company. Because if you become a dominant player in one market, not being like not worrying about major competition the way startups face in Silicon Valley, then, yeah, and then you can go to the next market. Because if you're a startup in Silicon Valley, you have to fight on all fronts. You think that you have something unique, then you discover there will be 22 companies doing the same thing. You go, you compete for money with best entrepreneurs from all over the world, from Asia, from Europe, anywhere. Now, if you think that you're changing the industry, then, yeah, Silicon Valley should be the place. And here's an important question about what comes first, revenues or growth? What do you think happens in the US? Is it revenue or growth for startups? Right? Growth. Now, when uh, I look at companies and uh, they ask me, like, what is it? What sales do we need to have 
before you guys go to the next round with investments. And we say, well, are you signing up thousands of users every week? How about several million in a month? And then really, if you look at the big companies, I won't name the names, but you know them all. I don't know if they, they have revenues. I mean, they do, but they, they're still burning through cash like crazy. Can you do that in Europe? Nope. But as a result, if you are looking at a niche market and you are trained and disciplined to actually produce revenues right away, I mean, not right away, but at a reasonable amount of time, it's a good discipline. It means that you have a product that people want. You have your customer. Now, if you become the dominant player in your own market, then moving to another market becomes easier because you already know what you've built and you just expand. Now, why Europe does not have its own social network like Facebook, for example? China has, Russia has. I don't know about India, I'm sure India has too. Why not in Europe? Right, languages. You cannot really put in one group of interests, like, again, not to pick on countries, but I would say Italy, France, and Germany are all very different countries. So you cannot really unite them. You can do it in a big market. So as a result, Amazon had a lot of problems entering outside foreign markets because they all had local players. And uh, you know, Google in Russia for a while was doing okay, but then Yandex became much uh, more dominant player. Having said all that, I would say that if you want to build a company, we still didn't get to my slides, but we can, you know, I can't forget slides. Um, I don't know who's in the audience. I thought I'll talk to entrepreneurs and I was prepared to answer questions about fundraising because yesterday I sat on a couple of panels, was listening to, and there were a lot of questions about fundraising, but nobody really was answering those questions because VCs do not want to tell you what they really think about your presentation, but I'll be happy to answer those questions. And I think I'll stop here for the sake of time and I'll be available to answer questions. Thank you.